Hi, this video is a reissue and revamped version of how to make a bike list. But I'm not only going to show you how to make a bike list, I'm going to explain why you shouldn't do postcodes and why you should only make one bike list at a time. So let's get on with that. The first thing to note is that you're not able to view bike lists or revise bike lists unless you have first made a bike list. And you'll not be able to make a bike list until you have told the app the points that you don't know. So the very first thing is to revise. By revising, you are marking the points as known, unknown, and sticky. What we're interested in today is the unknown. Every time you mark a point as unknown, it is in your make a bike list window. There is no point making bike lists with known points or sticky points. It's all to do with the unknown, how to get out and see those points and point them and know them. The larger your unknown list, the better the bike lists you can make. So revise until you have around 300 to 600 unknown points. You do this by revising either one week, one month, or three months worth of points from the latest sheet. It's entirely up to you how far back in time you go. Once you have that, then you have the foundation to make a great bike list. As long as you have enough points in your unknown list, you are ready to make a bike list. Don't start making bike lists if you only have 50 to 100 points. You won't be getting the best out of your time. Now select Make Bike List. The bottom half of the screen is your pinning list. Pinning list is basically a list of all your unknown points pinned to the map ready to point. You can switch between list view and map. The list is in postcode order to make it easier for those who wish to point by postcodes. And I mentioned at the beginning that you should not point in postcodes and here's why. Pointing in postcodes means you drive to the area, not pointing. You drive away from the area, not pointing. And once you're in the postcode, you still have to organize the points into some pointable fashion so that you don't waste too much mileage. If you point points in postcodes, you are going to see less over a longer amount of hours and learn less points. If you're happy doing less in more hours, then go ahead and do postcodes. But if you want to learn as many points as possible in as little time as possible, then you should do geographical lists, not postcode lists. What's a geographical list? It's a list of points strung together to make a route going out to an area and returning from an area with the points in the most perfect order to cover the least amount of miles over the shortest amount of time. Let me give you a quick run through for what everything means in the pinning list. To the left, you have a choice of all, pinned and unpinned. So all is going to show you all points, whether it's pinned or unpinned. Pinned is going to show you all the points that are already have a pin location in the map. They're ready to be pointed. And unpinned is going to show you points that are yet to be pinned to the map. And you can add them to the map yourself. If you want to add this pin, you can very easily, and it will be added to our central database at the end of every week and becomes pinned for everyone. To add it, simply find its location on the map, tap the screen in that location to drop a pin. Then tap the point, and if you're happy with its placement, press confirm. It's now a pinned point. This pinning activity is a great step towards learning the point. You have seen its name, you have read its road location, you found its place on the map and you place the pin. So even though it has not yet been visited, you are well on your way to learning it through the action and activity of pinning it. The number to the right of the point name is the number of times it's been asked. If you tap the pin, it will take you to the map and show you the point's pinned location. To return to the screen, just tap the top of the screen and it will return to the screen before. If you tap the point itself, it will turn blue and you will see it appear at the top as the first point in your bike list. If the point is blue, it's in your bike list. I absolutely suggest that you do not make your bike list from this view, but that you rather do it from the map view, which I will show you how to shortly. To remove a point from the list, simply tap it again. It will change from blue back to gray and be removed from the bike list you were preparing. Okay, let's make our first bike list. What I suggest you do now is set your filter. 
Do not try to point everything asked. Make sure you at least know the most repeated points first. If you're a beginner and there are lots of pins as are in this example, then set the filter to 20 times asked or more, and at least asked in the last year. Older than that is not relevant to you yet. Select map view. Always work in map view when you're making your bike lists. What you see is a map showing the location of every point you do not currently know. Now you're going to always base your bike list on where your journey begins and where it ends. This is usually your home, but it can be anywhere. So I live at Limehouse. Zoom in to around your home starting point. And if you live outside London, zoom into the corner of London you are going to be coming in from. If you tap the pin, its name tag appears. So I'm tapping the nearest pin to the start of my journey. If I'm happy, I will tap the information I and add it to my list as the first point to visit. And it will turn green, which means it's in my bike list. I then look for the next point of interest that will be en route to wherever I've chosen to head towards that day. I then choose another and another and another and so on until I've reached what I feel will be my halfway mark. So if you want to see 30 points, you need to think of the return journey around 15 points. And if you want to see 80 points, then think of the return journey after 40 points. It's entirely up to you and based on what you feel happy and comfortable pointing, just try for your own personal maximum. All the green pins you now see are the points for that bike list. If you press new, those green pins will disappear and you are ready to make a new bike list with the remaining red pins. I suggest you do not make a new list until you have visited and pointed this one. It's not a good idea to have several bike lists waiting to be done. Just make one at a time, visit it and point it and make another the night before you want to go out pointing again. This will stop confusion and allow your bike list to contain as many points from recent revisions as possible and will prevent you from repeatedly marking points in your revision as unknown when they're already on a bike list. So make one bike list and don't make a new one until you are ready to go out again. Once you have enough points in your list, then name your list by tapping rename. I prefer to name them numerically, so I will call this sheet number one. If you now return to your homepage and tap view bike lists, you will see all your historical bike lists in chronological order. Bike list one is now ready to go and visit. Tap map view and you can see the whole day's pointing in map order in case you want help with the direction to the next point. That's how I make my bike lists and hopefully uh, in the near future I'm going to make another video showing you how to point from these bike lists and showing the whole procedure of how you point from these bike lists. In the meantime, if you're not using an app, you absolutely should be using an app. The app is going to make your pointing more efficient, your revision more efficient, your control of all the information more efficient. So if you're just doing pen and paper still, you really are making things harder for yourself. That's it for this video. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please leave any comments you can below. I will answer all of them and hopefully I'll see you in the near future.